it's a brand new hockey season and within a few months he went from the the fresh face to the wily veteran i'm here with ryan drury the play-by-play -play announcer for the guelph storm on rogers tv ryan when it, it's been a real big change you're working with mark and scott this season uh what goes through your head knowing that uh the whole team is is just the whole broadcast team is very different this year yeah, it's it's a weird feeling for sure, you know, stepping in when I did, you know, to take over for the legendary Bill Granger on color with with Steve Fitzsimmons, you know, that was a that was a daunting enough challenge. And then, you know, within a year, year and a half, Steve's gone and uh, all of a sudden, you know, you're you're thrust into the into the limelight, if you will, as the new voice of the Guelph storm, which, you know, was always a dream of mine, but I didn't think it would happen in the quick fashion that it did. And, you know, daunting enough to have to step into Bill's shoes. Then, you know, 12 months later, they're asking me to fill in for another legend in Steve and, you know, two guys that I have such respect and, and love for they, they showed me the ropes and, you know, I'll always be thankful for that, but, you know, stepping in this year, it's, yeah, it's it's a weird feeling, you know. I'm it's a satisfying feeling because it, you know, it's obviously something like I said that I've wanted to work toward my whole life and you know, stepping in and being able to do it with two guys who have the same kind of passion for the sport and the team as I do and Mark and Scott, um it's it's a really cool feeling and you know, also have to mention, you know, Trevor Pryor leaving our broadcast as well. Yeah, it's it's a roster of kind of new faces and i hope we live up to expectations for guelph fans because you know they deserve the best because for over 20 years they got the best and we want to make sure that we deliver the same type of product and trevor bill and steve you know for my money nobody did it better so it it's a cool feeling it's a humbling feeling for sure it you know back you know i'm a northern guy for the last few years i was working up in sudbury and that team is just one of those classic teams that you know, those three guys working together for so long, everybody knew about them. Uh, I hope you guys become that team for us in, in, in the next few years as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the goal, right? So in terms of uh, the team this year, uh, what, what what's the team looking like this year? I think the team is really good. And, and I think some people were after what they saw last year with high expectations that did not come to fruition for the first three months of the season. I think that people this year are kind of quick to write them off a little bit. I know that there's still some question marks in goal. Um, they were there last year, uh, you know, with Braden Gillespie, who is a, a great young talent, uh, but he's still very young. And then bringing in Damian Slavic in the import draft, people are still kind of wondering, hmm, what's that goaltending look like in Guelph? But what we saw out of Gillespie last year and everything that I've heard about Slavic, I think that they have a really dynamic and young one-two punch. There's, it, it can never be a bad thing when you have two young goaltenders with this type of skill level that want to start and want to push each other. I think that's an advantage actually for Guelph rather than some people maybe thinking it's a disadvantage. And then you look up front and on the blue line, they benefit from so many talented returning players. And we talked about it so much during our preseason coverage, you know, that top line of Matt Potra, Braden Bowman and Max Nemestikov, they were one of, if not the most electric first line in the OHL going down the stretch after the trade deadline. And you supplement that with Bushinger, Cam Allen, who will have to wait to return from injury, uh, which is unfortunate for Guelph, but you look down at acquisitions like Braden Hislop coming in to solidify the blue line. Young players like Quinn Bo Shane and Ryland Singh, who the team are really high on. I, I thought that in the one preseason game we covered as well, the other young guys, Parker Snellgrove, Will McFadden, they don't look like rookies at all. And then you supplement that with the Jake Carabellas of the world and, you know, Ryan McGuire. Like they have a really nice mix of really talented scores and gritty sandpaper guys and the biggest thing too is the room seems really together and they did last year even when they struggled so I think that the team looks like a very very competitive team and honestly I I really do feel like they can challenge for a top three seed in the Western Conference. Uh, one of my favorite things about the games is 
the, the time before the games when everyone's just kind of hanging out in the media room talking about everything. And I know you have a new podcast about the Guelph Storm, and I feel like that's kind of be kind of the tone on what the podcast will be like. What 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 is the show uh, that you're doing with the Storm? Yeah, so I I approached them last year and just said, hey, look, like it would be a really easy thing to kind of do something somewhat unique. I, I know that, you know, some of the teams have, you know, dedicated radio shows and stuff like that. But to my knowledge, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, people taking advantage of the podcasting avenue. So uh, we're launching a new show. It's called Eye of the Storm, a Guelph Storm podcast. Uh, the episodes will be, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to start releasing them every Friday, uh, starting with September 22nd. We're going to release a new episode all the way up until the playoffs because, of course, we, we don't want to bug the guys during the playoffs. And I'll just be talking with, you know, staff from the team, the players, of course, and a couple other interesting voices uh, from around the Guelph Storm fan base and, and from their history as well. The first episode is going to feature head coach Chad Wiseman. So, yeah, you're going to be able to find that on uh, a YouTube channel that I'm going to make for the team. And uh, the team is going to share the podcast uh, every Friday and you'll be able to find it wherever you find your podcasts. Cool. So uh, I just finished talking to Mark Perry and Mark and I had a, a background where we both met uh, doing professional wrestling in, in Northern Ontario. And when you and I first met, we found out, oh, we used to play shows around in the same area here in the Guelph area. Uh, how did you go from music and get into broadcasting? Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, when I was in a band in high school, um, you know, I I was already really into sports. I've always been a huge sports nut. I'm sure people can tell. Uh, but, you know, music is the one thing that I, I probably have a little more passion for than than sports. Uh, I think that's probably common of a lot of people, you know, it's, it's music. It's, it's such a connecting thing for so many people. And, uh, you know, when I, you know, when I left high school and, um, you know, had college in front of me, this was always my goal. Um, despite, you know, loving playing in a band and, and being a front man and, I still do it on the side. I, I have a little project called Clarence Street. If anybody wants to check it out, it's pretty heavy. I'll warn you. Um, it's it's definitely not radio friendly. So, uh, but if you're into that stuff, you know, it's there. But this was always my goal. So, uh, you know, I never really had to make a, a, a transition, if you will, from music to this. This was always what I wanted. And, and music was and still remains uh, a real passion of mine outside of, of sports broadcasting. So uh, let's say you had the controls of the PA at, at, the, at the Sleeman Center, getting ready for the game. Uh, you had to pick one song to hype up the crowd, starting off every game. What's the song you're picking? Well, I mean, they... <laughs> they've settled rightly so on thunderstruck you know and it fits you know acdc it's a classic you know that that's a good hype up song if i was in control of it though uh, and i'm glad you asked me this because like this is one of the questions i'm asking the players like hey if you have control of the ipod in the room you know what are you putting on and um so far i'm getting a lot of you know techno hip-hop some country Kids if i'm in control uh you're probably going to hear a lot of knocked loose turn style. But if I had to pick one song, give me some Pantera, give me some domination walk. Um, any of those old Pantera classics, that's what gets me revved up. And I'm sure some of the players would maybe enjoy it, but maybe it's a little too heavy. <laughs> I'm right there. If I had to pick, Two songs to start off any day. It's it's uh, Cowboys from Hell or Killing in the Name oh. of Rage Against the Machine. Just give me those. Oh. I'm ready to take over the Rage. <laughs> now that's, yeah, maybe a little Gorilla Radio. Let's go. You're, you're speaking <laughs> my language here. All right, Ryan. I can't wait to talk more hockey. Can't wait to talk more music with you throughout the year. And go Storm Go. And thanks for joining me today. Thanks, man.